going on guys? It is Johnny from CI Esports here today at CEX Conference here in Boston. I'm here with a very special guest today, a former NFL running back, current esports. What would you like to be called? I say, uh, oh, yeah, you can just call me. No, no, no. So a, a mind brain, yes. Yeah. But how would you like to be considered in the esports space? A so, coach, a, a leader, or a, a figurehead? Yeah. yeah, all that. Coach, <laughs> so officially, I remember talking to Sherry, my dean of students, that so they put me in the journalism, uh, mm -hmm. the College of Journalism and Mass Communication. No surprise. <laughs> Perfect place for esports, right? With the content and everything mm -hmm. going on. So right now I'm a lecturer for okay. the spring semester. I oh, just started nice. a class this week. So the kids, today is my Wednesday class, but you know, with everything being virtual, so mm -hmm. I just say, hey, this is the assignment. Nice. I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to this college esports event. I may be able to sneak into PAX. Because <laughs> I was actually going to come this way because I only coach, you know, teach today. Mm -hmm. So I was going to fly out here. Uh, what's today? Wednesday. Yep. So I was gonna fly out Thursday to go to PAX, but since I found out that actually it was a business thing, one of my mm -hmm. uh, uh, new fa faculty members, Alan Eno, he's in the, in the other room uh, doing some work on the line. He has to teach a class later, so I'm like, oh, I see. Like then we found out the day got postponed and all this. So I'm like, I get to go to PAX anyway. <laughs> um, but my class, I'm actually teaching. Like I said, I'll be a lecturer, and then come the fall, I'll be officially lecturer and director wow. of esports on the campus at the University of Nebraska where I played ball football at. Yes. Back in the so you have probably one of the most interesting journeys, I think, oh, yeah. in, in the esports realm uh, that I know of, right? So obviously for those who don't know, obviously you played in the NFL for many years and yeah. then obviously have made this, this huge transition over into esports. Mm -hmm. So kind of just talk about your journey from ball player to kind of getting into this space and kind of what it's been like so far to this point. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll try to give you this. this yeah, yeah. Of this. So my last year in football was 2009. Mm -hmm. And then I say NFL. Yeah. And then 2010, um, the, if you remember, was it the UFL? Mm -hmm. Came around for a little bit. Yep. I think they had a team. I know they had a New York team or a Connecticut team. Yep. That we actually, I remember going out, coming out to Connecticut, playing against them. Um, so there was an Omaha team, and that's my home town. Mm -hmm. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, originally. Cool. And so I... You know, reached out to the league and say, "Hey, I want to, you know, do whatever I need to do to get in this league. I still got, I can still play ball. I yep. still have it." And so I ended up getting picked up by the, the Nighthawks mm -hmm. and played one more year there. And then after that season, I tried to get on one more season with the Packers and asked, tried, went to Ted Thompson, sat at his desk, <laughs> said, "Hey, man, I'm ready to go. I, you know, I know I won't be the starter, but I can help out." Yeah. And you know, I'm, I've been, I say, from the time I was a kid, a team player. I understand what that word mm -hmm. means. And so nothing worked out there. So eventually, um, and then one more, my one, my one last try, because I'm, I'm, I say I'm a hard worker, mm -hmm. you know, I want to play. And so my last try was actually driving out to Montreal to be a part of the Alouettes. Ooh. We actually signed an official contract. To the CFL. Uh, CFL. Yeah. And I had the first day of practice. Well, obviously, you know, first day of, we had, I mean, they were run, literally running us into the ground. It was crazy. <laughs> and I tweaked my hamstring a little bit. It was a little sore, but it wasn't no, like, tear it was just a strain mm -hmm. and i was like i'll be back probably next week or the week after and the next morning i woke up oh we're releasing you you know so I'm like, oh okay damn. um so then fast forward from there like right away i say on the way back i just i, I sent a text to my agent i said you know this is this is it Stop. this is my last time and i'm ready to move on to something else so that time i had already been kind of thinking about coaching um and to see where that could take me yeah. and yeah, so in the area I was living, so I got into coaching in uh, high school level. So football, baseball, and track. Okay. And that's where it started. And in terms of gaming side, all that was neck and neck. So at the same time, all this is going on, I'm... <laughs> behind the scenes, you're... Behind the scenes, I'm come, when I come home, it's Halo, it's Madden, it's, it's 2K, it's FIFA. And mm -hmm. now I'm trying to bring in uh, NHL. Okay. And I'm trying to get all the sports games down again because as a kid I used to play all the sports games. Yeah. yeah. But now I went away from it and because of the shooters. Mm. Halo, Call of Duty, Overwatch, okay. Okay. Fortnite, all those shooters came out that I was like, oh, this is dope. <laughs> I just don't build. I will shoot you. <laughs> but I, I I tell my nephew, hey, yeah. you build. In Fortnite, right? Yeah. yeah it's I don't do gazebos. <laughs> I do headshots in gaming. So See, I don't build as bad anymore. See, I suck at building. So the no build mode of Fortnite. Exactly. I, I so loved it. I won. I won. On average, I won a third more no build games than I did actual <laughs> build games. So, um, so in 2016, you know, so that was like 2012, 2013, 14. So 2016 comes around, I take a business leadership class to get my uh, leadership certificate, certification. You know, always better myself. You know, that's just what I learned from being an athlete. And so, one of the days of classes, we we're talking about like 
accountability and you know respect and dedication and all that. And the teacher is leading the class talking and it, I something popped in my head, something I had saw over the weekend. Mm -hmm. I remember I was watching the X Games and the X Games at that time when they were still carrying Halo tournaments, uh -huh. a part of what they were doing outside on the, in the slopes and skiing and all the freestyle stuff. And I remember seeing Lethal, uh, who's still a Halo pro today, mm -hmm. um, playing on his team. I don't know if he was with Optic Gamer or who he was with at that time, but they were playing, you know, in a matchup where they were close. They ended up losing, so he got mad at his uh, team and the coach or whatever, and jumped on the other team and played against no his team way. in the same tournament. <laughs> and so, of course, the thing that flashes across my brain: any traditional sport athlete, any athlete would know. You can't be leave your team know, yeah. in the tournament you're playing in to play against your team on another team because you're mad at the coach or one of your teammates. Mm -hmm. You know, and I met Lethal not too long after that. So about a two, about three years after that, I met him and I told him the story. He just laughed. He's like, yeah, I, 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 I still can't believe it. So it was really cool to kind of bring that together. But that right there got me thinking, like, these person needs coaching. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I'm going to bring coaching to. I knew it was already there. Yeah. And there's great coaches, eight sport coaches out a there. Different perspective on There's it. a different perspective being a traditional sport background that I have. I knew how to teach that because coaches taught me that or I heard coaches coach my teammates on it mm -hmm. and develop them, you know, and, and being developed as a player from the college football level to the pro football level. I realized before that, that I got a lot of stuff that I could show players, mm -hmm. that I could show gamers. You know, that could show young college students about being the best they can be. Mm -hmm. being, And then on top of that, being a great student and then just a great person. Because, you know, being in the NFL, I met, uh, I, I rubbed uh, elbows with, or I've been a part of big groups where we're all on the same page. Yep. You know, or I met other athletes from other teams that played during my time that were phenomenal athletes. They either won Super Bowls or they were pro bowlers. And the part for me is that some of them were, you know, those you could tell they were the jerks, but some of them were still um, grounded, mm -hmm. humble, like myself. Yeah. And so, and you know, as an athlete, you could kind of sense that right away when you sit down and talk to somebody. You already know where they're at. Yeah. You know, you're like, okay, this guy, he's he's chill. <laughs> or this, oh, he's on he's, a -hole, he's yeah. on his own planet. Yeah. <laughs> he's on his own planet somewhere. <laughs> so, so with that, so my that background, and then getting into high school, you know, traditional sports coaching, and I see the thing happen with Lee Thorn. I'm like. So I start at this time already journeying across the U.S. mostly to video game conventions. So I'm going to E3. I'm going to San Diego Comic Con. So you fully immerse yourself in the Yes. Place. PAX East, PAX West, DreamHack. I'm going to all these places. And at the time I started going to E3 in Los Angeles, I connected with some people, traded business cards, mm -hmm. and then find another current from our former player, Hank Basket. You know, so we start hanging out. Oh, yeah. And we already heard through the grapevine. Like, cause I'll be meeting with some a group of Microsoft people. Mm -hmm. It was like, have you heard of great, uh, Hank Bassett? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know Hank. And then, or he, he, he told me, he would hear the same thing. He'd be at an EA event. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we, have you talked to my mom yet? And he's like, no, but we need to. And then finally, we met up mm -hmm. and hung out that whole time. And then he connected me more with people more in different companies. But the cool thing about it was these people now are my friends. Mm -hmm. Like all those people that I met in twenty between twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen are literally I could call them like, hey man, how you doing? How Wrigley doing? That's one of my friends' dog. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking to them about that. So mm -hmm. that's one thing about the industry that you really didn't get in the professional world of it's football. More close knit. Yeah, it was, it's a close knit. I can say that. Mm -hmm. You know, for football it was more like guys that were on the same team with you. During your early years, or a guy that you went to college football, yeah. you know, somebody that went, I went to Nebraska with, mm -hmm. then we, we're going to be way tired than mm -hmm. somebody that went to Mississippi, even though we're both Packers together. Yep. So that's where you saw the, the connectedness. But here it was like, I had friends, I got friends at Microsoft, I got friends at Power A, Lucid Sound, um, Activision, EA Sports, that I could just reach out on a whim, just check in with them. Mm -hmm. You know, then by the, by the end of the conversation, oh, yeah, I'll send you this. I'm like, thank you. New, new mutt drop back. I'm like, that, you know, I can, I can update my roster. All good there. But so, yeah, that was so, yeah, I, I pretty much have been, you know, as a, as a lot of people have said to me, like the unicorn. Because mm -hmm. they don't have, they haven't seen somebody on my stature coming from the football world. And me, I'm, I'm very humble, so I even. I never saw myself as that. Yeah. But they, they people see me in like losing. Of course, yeah. You know, and they really could say words. And I'm like, if you really knew me, you wouldn't be acting like that. I'm like, 
you know, as as I am, and I and I hold it proudly. I'm the biggest geek dork mm-hmm. in the talk because I'll talk about Matt and my mud team like I just did, <laughs> or my loadout in Halo to talking about being a Batman fan and how you know now I'm a Marvel fan because of what they did with the Infinity Saga. And Black Panther this, Black Panther that. Oh, you know, I could go. Well? Huh? Are you an anime fan as well? And an anime. I just started watching One Piece and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I could, I've, I've done that because I learned by being a fan of it. Like, mm-hmm. this is the this is the culture of esports. Yes, yes. It's it's the the culture, this is the culture of the video game industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember right when I retired, I was already watching it previous with the G4 Network. Yes. I used, oh, to, yeah. I I used to wake up, watch Adam Sessler, <laughs> and watch uh, Attack of the Show, <laughs> and then... It was another show that came on later. I was trying to think of it. I can't think of it um, now, but it'll pop in later. Yeah, yeah. You know, watching those shows and be like, I could sit, I mean, so X-Play, every, X-Play, X-Play yes, that's yes. what it was. And I would sit there, whatever those shows took, hour, two hours, I would watch that two hours or so, and then I would start my day. That's crazy. And it was noon. And I'm like, hold up, I got to, I'm a grown ass now. <laughs> I got to get up out the room and out the house before, before noon, but it was like, I was getting my fix on all the new video game updates. Mm-hmm. And that's what inspired me. Those shows there and that network inspired me for my gamer, for my podcast now. Because mm-hmm. I remember their format. They would start the show with Olivia Munn and Adam came on too. Mm-hmm. And that's when Olivia came on and then she moved on to bigger and better things. But just having them both on there, you know, talking about the gaming world from what companies were doing with their games, if they were getting sued or hackers doing this, and then here's the latest game drop. Yep. You know, that's coming out on EA or Riot or Activision. This is before social or, media. So this right. is how you understood what was happening in real time around that era. Like what was yeah. like the games, the release date, and things like that. So it's, it was a big deal. Like, yeah, like, or the comic book update. Yeah, you know, yeah. They would talk about that stuff and the biggest anime show or movie or next character that's coming out. So it was, that was the culture. Mm-hmm. And that's what I uh, kind of used in you know, developing my podcast. And then I had a show before that and it led into that. And actually my first show that I did, it was a local station. WFRB in Wisconsin, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and they had a YouTube channel they let me use. Oh, and the show I created was called Gaming and Culture, because Gaming and Culture was all yep. it, it was like perfect. Mm-hmm. Like all the stuff we just mentioned about what's in and connected to the gaming industry, the mm-hmm. anime to to the games that are played, to um, fans of comic books and comic comic book movies and yep. all that. That's all intertwined. I mean, I go back to '09 of going to my first. San Diego Comic Con and seeing a Microsoft booth taking up more of a quarter of the floor <laughs> at, at San Diego Comic Con, thinking I'm gonna see more comic book stuff. Where I'm like, oh, they got video games right there. So I go down there. They got um, then it's a was a um, uh, that makes a Tekken. They're there. Nam was it Namco or yeah, Namco. I think it's Namco. Mm-hmm. Um, they're there and they have a little Tekken tournament. I jump in that, you know, and it's like, oh man, it's like this is. Place. So once I got the connections and then start doing, uh, once I meet Larry, so mm-hmm. I meet Larry Ridley and then my other friend Greg Zion, where I'm, they asked me to shoutcast. And I'm like, no problem. <laughs> and it's games that I know. It's Madden, it's Gears of War, it's Halo. And then from there, Fortnite, League of Legends, um, Rocket League. You know, I start, and then like some of these games, I'm like, you know what, I don't play them, I'm not good at them, but I'm going to do my research on them real mm-hmm. quick. Go to YouTube, or I, or I look up the, the the you know how you win and lose, and the the verbiage that you use, or how, how I can use it. Stay it. true to the culture of the game. Itself. Exactly. So I don't want to come in being you know where they know right away. Oh, he's a football background. Or he didn't really mm-hmm. do no research and know what's going on in our world. Yeah. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and if I don't do, if I don't know the knowledge of work, I'm not going to try to fake the phone. Yeah. You know, say, oh, I'm going to tell you, look, I don't know a whole lot about this, but this is what I see <laughs> on the field. You know, right? I see in this game right now. And I think that's what my humbleness about me got. The, I said to everybody that was already working there, um, spending time grinding it, as we say in the gaming world, they welcomed me in because of that. You know, yeah. my, my humbleness and my attitude about, look, I don't know a whole lot, but I'm here to learn. It. Yeah. And I'm here, here to make it just as, you know, own it as myself. Mm-hmm. And then that just led on to the, you know, from the casting to then being hired at my first university was at Lakeland University in mm-hmm. Oregon. So, you know, shout out to David Simon Jr., who was the, um, student affairs president to make sure, you know, student campus, uh, student affairs to make sure when things, you know, they bring things on campus for kids to do. And one of their kids, uh, at the time, he was like a sophomore, Robert Zong, had the, had already organized the esports club on campus. And they would meet once a month. Some of them, the hardcore kids would play league. 
and some of the kind of kids if they were just casual they'll do mario kart tournaments mm -hmm. small tournaments like that but then he asked if um does it dr david black for you know, the fact that they wanted to bring an esports team official yeah. varsity level to campus and they worked on the budget and I was, uh, I had a little, I had a friend of mine who was a teacher there mm -hmm. and was uh, then a faculty member, or he was a teacher, then he was a student first and then a teacher, and he heard through the grade file mm -hmm. because he was former, um, part, of the part of their staff that they were looking to, you know, develop an esports program. They need to bring that coach in. And he thought, I was the first person that thought of it. like that. Yeah, because we, our relationship, our friendship was dictated around video games. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would meet once a, once a, twice a month. <laughs> we would go to this local restaurant in Green Bay um, and talk, we eat burgers, french fries, and then talk about the latest Marvel, because this is right at the end of the Infinity Saga. Uh, so we were talking, every other month, we were talking about a new movie being dropped. <laughs> so we would do little videos, sometimes talking about who we like better, how the movie's gonna go in the next movie, and then we have our like, second to last meeting, he's like, guess what? I'm like, what? He said, my school is playing create an esports program. And would you be interested? Would you be interested? I said basically <laughs> hell yeah. Like, like who I need to like, send my email to, you know, so you have my information, mm -hmm. pass that to them so you could send me whatever. And like within a two week period I was hired. You know, right away. Wow. And so that from that on that was me tapping into, you know, another I say another passion of mine. Football, mm -hmm. traditional sports was a passion. And video games was just now, a the next evolution for you. The kind of what your career is going toward this, like just the esports, like just kind of scratch this itch of like this is my passion now. Yep. And, you know, football's done. I did that. Now it's time to kind of dive deep into esports. Yeah. But I think what's remarkable about your story is that I think you opened the door for a lot of athletes, right? Because I think what we've seen over the past with COVID and other things, especially in Madden, a lot of the athletes, current athletes, are playing like the Durban James, the safety for yeah, he's a, the, the, the we Chicago. almost played. We played in a tournament Chargers. together. We almost. Yeah. Played against each other, <laughs> but I lost in the first round. But mm -hmm. I found out Michael Vick is not gonna like this. <laughs> so Darwin won the tournament. Mm -hmm. But he reason why he won, he beat Michael Vick seventy to like twenty. Mike, right? Mike, seventy. And when what the what the TOs figured out after the fact, I was so the game. Me and Darwin, we played in the first round, mm -hmm. and he only beat me by ten points. Mm -hmm. And then he went it all to the championship and beat Michael by sixty and so it's fifty. And they was like, y'all should have played in this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, sorry, Mike, I'm just this, this no, same, Mike, same fact. Like, we got to have a conversation about that. That's, that's right, nuts. Right, but right. what I was getting at was I think, you, again, you open the door for a lot of the athletes now to kind of have that two-way career, right? Because I think a lot of times with, in, the, in, in the sports game industry, the, the actual football industry, or you mean basketball even, it's looked at as almost like a, a hindrance to play games. Like, why aren't you training? Why aren't you doing this? Like, you can't have hobbies, right? And I think for you to see that, like, hey, like, yeah, I did the football thing, I did my time there, but you also have hobbies, right? Have yeah. other interests and passions, like video games, like anime, like comics, and I think that is remarkable in the fact that now, in 2023, it's seen as normal, like, right? A lot of athletes now, like, yeah, I do on my off time, just, I don't need to go out, go home, stream a little bit, yeah. have a good time. So I think that's the evolution of esports and gaming in general, is that the culture has evolved to where now athletes who are seen as, like, this high level in, like, society are like, yo, right. these guys are like, Go yeah. down there. They don't go down there. Right. They don't mess with well, the, the nerds, right? Or the geese. No, yeah, man, no, listen, no, no. they grew up probably on it, right? I own it. Yeah, I own like it. so I think that's remarkable. But so my last question here is, um, what's the, what's next for you? Uh I mean, so like what for you is like the next step in your evolution in terms of your esports career? Oh, uh, right now I'm like I said, it's come fall. Mm -hmm. I'm planning out I'm meeting with the esports uh, officers right now. Yeah. Or the club team officers, excuse me. So this, the club team officers are all students. Yeah. So now I'm basically you know, talking with them on a day to day in the Discord, asking them questions, having face meetings, face to face meetings if we can, um, and just asking them how how do you run practices? Because right now they don't have no dedicated facility on campus. We're building one out now. We literally wow. starting this week on campus. Wow! To have it ready, to have thank you to have it ready by fall mm -hmm. of 2023. So I'm thinking in my head they had a dedicated space, but they don't. They're playing from their dorm rooms or their apartments, <laughs> on college or school <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> And, and competed at a high level. That's you insane. Know, their Rocket League is probably the best team that we have on the, on, mm -hmm. on the club right now, along with the Valorant and the League of Legends team. Mm -hmm. And and the College of Duty team is pretty good, too. I've been watching them some of their matches. I watched the League last night. They lost one, but they played hard mm -hmm. to the bitter end. So, And we got 80-plus kids in this esports club already. So I got 10. So as of, since I've been on campus since January of this year, mm -hmm. we have now 10 partial scholarships that I could give out for new incoming Freshman and transfer students. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I've been asked by some of the current students, can we get some <laughs> yeah, of I, I was like, I got to ask campus once I get back. You know, 
from this trip mm -hmm. and, and clarify it with the dean of students. I, I probably should not, but because it's for new students coming in, but I'll ask. Yeah, you know, that's what I'll ask. So my, my, my vision and what, like, what I want to do next is basically bring this program to a level to where everybody in the United States, especially college level, they realize this is a thing and that they want to start doing it at other campuses. Because mm -hmm. we mentioned, I know I've been in panels where all, already Ohio State does it. You know, they have a um, program and it does well. Other schools, others. But the thing is, and what somebody mentioned and what I know, because I've been in coaching this space for three years, is lower is usually the lower conferences or the lower division of schools have a full The smaller schools, so that's yeah. like their their selling points. Like right. we have this built out flesh out because they have it. Yeah, they do have a mm -hmm. built out facility. Somebody brought up, uh, I think y'all brought up uh, Butler. Yes, I've seen. Trust me, when y'all say, <laughs> "Oh my God," I'm like, I wanted to say, "Yeah, you're dang right," because <laughs> it's ridiculous mm -hmm. what they have. But that's the commitment you gotta have. Yes, it, it's not nothing to balk at anymore. Mm -hmm. Esports is here. Esports will bring funding and more students to any campus, no matter if it's a junior college, community college, boys and girls club program, or D1 University, like Bay, like like Butler, like Baylor, like Nebraska, like Alabama. Mm -hmm. I mean, those schools have club teams now, yeah. like us. But we're now, I'm here on campus at Nebraska to bring it to the varsity level, mm -hmm. you know, bring the credibility, which to me is like, the, the students already got the credibility. I said, okay, I'll just, I'll be the, the just flashy. Just raise it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind being the team player. I'll take that for the team mm -hmm. to bring it to the level to, be, to get the sponsored uh, 40 plus gaming stations, to get the shout casting um, room, to get a content creator pod, mm -hmm. to get um, full full ride scholarships in the next five, six years. You know, mm -hmm. maybe if sooner, great. Mm -hmm. That means I'm doing my job. So yeah. that's that's my next step to get, like I said, full ride scholarships. Um, a no, another facility where we have the one that we're going to have at the, in the basement next to the Nebraska bookstore, but then we have our standalone uh, building, just like the basketball team does, just like the football team does, mm -hmm. where we have our own locker room, just so we have our own cafeteria, yeah. or we share the, t the training table with other traditional sports, because mm -hmm. that's what I remember on after being on campus in Nebraska, all the athletes sit at the training table, so we're gonna have a table at the. We're gonna have a table at the table. <laughs> we're gonna be our, my my Madden players, my FIFA players, my Call of Duty players, my League Valorant Rocket League players are all gonna be sitting right down the way from the basketball the athletes. Yes, that's like everybody yeah. else. Yeah, just like everybody else. So that's that's my next step. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of steps. <laughs> you know, I'm not just one step. I'm I'm, a, I'm not a one step pony. I'm like five or six steps. Then probably five six years. Then I could kind of. Let it, I say go on cruise control, but yeah. I'm gonna always be right there just to put the hand back on the steering wheel mm -hmm. if it guides off course a little bit. Absolutely, man. Yeah. You always gotta keep aiming for bigger things so you make big things happen. So, exactly. so I appreciate you so much, Mom, for coming on the show, man, and give us a little bit of your time. I think what you're doing right now, currently, your story is really like gonna elevate what esports is currently on a different yeah. scale, a different perspective. What you're coming from and where you're at now, I think, will only highlight those athletes who are kind of in a similar boat as you and want to say, hey, you know, I can do both. I can be a full Division one athlete, I can be a, a, a high school athlete and still have this passion on the side to kind of elevate myself as well. Exactly. So thank you so much, man. We you appreciate having you. you. Yep. And see you soon, my guy. Yeah, no problem.